For Recovery Doctor, I'm Dr. Kevin Smith. I'm a vestibular physical therapist, and I today am going to talk about migraines and one aspect of migraines that you may have overlooked or you may have not looked into. Now, I don't need to tell you if you've been experiencing migraines or chronic migraines, how much this can impact your life and really make it difficult to make it through work or relationships or just get through the day. Um, if you're not sure what's causing your vertigo, feel free to download my free ebook on the five most common causes of vertigo and how to recover. I'll put the link below and you just, you'll get that in your email just by signing up for my email list. Um, but if you have been experiencing migraines or chronic migraines, um, one thing that I want you to think about is the gut. Now, I'm gonna explain in this video what the relationship and the links might be and what the research says about migraines and gut dysfunction or dysbiosis. Now the gut has a lot of different bacteria and um, you know yeasts and everything in there and it needs to be balanced well. Now if there's some kind of dysbiosis, that means that something is out of balance, uh, something's not working right in the gut and this can lead to a lot of different dysfunctions. Um, now, what is the relationship, you know, I'm talking about this gut, what's the relationship between the gut and the brain? Well, there is a gut-brain access. So what happens in the brain can affect what happens in the gut. Now, I think everybody kind of assumes this, you know, you, have some, you can have something, um, you know, relationally impact you and you feel butterflies in your stomach or, you know, you get these uh, feelings in your stomach from something that happens, um, you know, in relationships or with stressful situations. Um, and that can influence what's produced in the gut. And it can influence the, the biome. It can influence the type of bacteria that are in your gut. Um, but what we're learning more in research is that the gut can also ha influence the brain. So gut dysbiosis and dysfunction can lead to more things like anxiety and depression and those types of issues. Um, now, the question of this video is, how much is the gut influencing migraine attacks um, or increasing the severity of migraine? Now, I'm gonna get into that um, and look at what the research has to say. Um, so the one big um, aspect of the gut-brain access is gonna be the vagus nerve. And you'll ta hear this a lot, especially if you're experiencing migraines or you've been in this kind of realm for a while. You'll, hear, you'll have heard of vagal nerve stimulators and, and such. And that's because this vagus nerve has a big impact on your parasympathetic nervous system. So the nervous system that helps that rest or digest um, kind of state where, it feels, where you feel calm and relaxed versus fight or flight, which is this you know, adrenaline pumping and a lot of you know, just feeling stressed or feeling like your um, you know, heart's racing or pumping or pounding. Um, now that vagus nerve is going to be really important for because it runs all the way down from the brain from the brain all the way down to your abdomen and has a lot of um, influence on the gut function as well as other organs. Um, so it's going to be really important in keeping that vagal nerve uh, tone healthy to help with um, you know with the gut function. Um, now, what can influence and what are factors that can influence the gut-brain access? So you have things like inflammatory mediators. And we already know with migraines that you can have, you, my, people with migraines have increased levels of uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines. And this is found in biomarkers of migraine patients and um, compared to controls. Uh, so inflammatory mediators can affect how the, the gut is functioning, as well as neuropeptides. So uh, things like CGRP, which is um, also going to be, <laughs> this is going to have to be another video on how that affects migraines, but is found at elevated levels in pa uh, people who are experiencing migraines, uh, as well as substance P and other neuropeptides. Um, the serotonin pathway uh, also is implicated with, with people who experience migraines. Now, serotonin is produced in the brain, but it's also produced in the gut, and it has different functions there. Um, and so that can be affected, um, particularly with pain and um, you know inflammation in the body. Um, now, you also have stress hormones. So uh, stress can affect gut motility as well as the brain. 
Um, and then you have nutrients as well that, that help maintain the gut barrier and um, the kind of neuroprotective properties as well. Um, now, when we look at gut dysbiosis and migraines, um, what is the impact and kind of what is found in migraines that um, isn't in you know what we call healthy controls? Uh, so alter they've done studies. One study found alterations in the gut microbiome, so the bacteria and the, and everything in the gut, uh, with higher levels of certain bacteria like Tisserelia and sure, I'm not going to pronounce these correctly, but uh, Peptonophilaceae and Roseburia compared to controls. So interesting that there is a change in the gut microbiome. The bacteria is different in people with migraine compared to healthy controls. Um, now, when we look at GI disorders linked to migraine, um, the one disorder that has been looked at is in one study was Heliobacter pylori or H. pylori infection. Um, prevalence of H. pylori in migraine patients was 45% compared to 33% in controls. Now, that is only about 12% difference. Um, you know, of course, I'd like to see a, a bigger difference to really be like, this is a huge problem. But it is interesting to note that it was statistic statistically significant. There was an increased prevalence uh, in migraine patients compared to controls. Um, now, that is going to increase inflammation, uh, chronic inflammation um, throughout the body, as well as, you know, inflammation that's going on with, with migraines as well. Now, the neck, another um, GI disorder linked to migraine is IBS or irritable bowel syndrome or irritable bowel disease. Now, I consider this kind of a trash can diagnosis, kind of like vertigo. Um, you know, what that there's some kind of cause to the IBS. It's not just you have IBS, there's something causing it, right? But they did find that there was a, a coexistence or an increased prevalence of. IBS in patients uh, compared to controls. So one study found that there was 6% um, in migraine patients compared to 2.2% in controls. Another study found that migraines, um, IBS incidence in migraine patients was about two times higher than in controls. Um, so it's, it's something to take note of, but um, so far not a um, huge difference. Um, but I mean, two times higher is, is a good amount for that, that particular study. And another one that they found is celiac disease. Um, so there's an increased prevalence of migraine in celiac disease patients compared to control. So um, the, there is a 3.79 times um, increase for people with celiac disease to have migraine compared to those who don't. Um, and yeah, so looking at these, uh, you know, gut dysfunctions or uh, GI disorders that are, you know, they've looked at to, to compare to migraine, um, you know, some of it is a little bit increased, right? But there's some kind of correlation there, which is interesting. Um, it may not be everybody that is experiencing migraine, but there certainly can be a population of people who are experiencing migraines that do have some GI dysfunction that is uh, that is impacting it. Um, so what's interesting is that um, what what I'm interested in is seeing, okay, well, what's causing the migraine? And we don't they're they're looking at associations between migraine and gut dysfunction, uh, migraine and inflammatory diseases. Um, at, so far, they haven't been able to find what, okay, well, increased inflammation is causing migraine or migraine is causing increased inflammation, they're finding that there's association between migraines and increased pro-inflammatory cytokines, or um, there's an association between migraines and IBS, or increased incidence of IBS. So there is a lot more research to be done so far with this, but the we know that the gut is influenced um, you know the gut brain impact or the gut brain access has a um, uh, relationship or is in, um, involved with some neurological diseases such as multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, um, 
and others. And so it's going to be interesting to see if there's more research done um, looking at how gut health can impact um, you know migraines. If there's any kind of gut perme or issues with gut permeability, um, allowing more systemic inflammation into the body that's triggering migraines. Um, I imagine that you know maybe there might be a subset of migraine that is affected by this, um, and this might be like okay, well, you have people with migraines. Maybe there's a subset that is more driven from gut dysfunction. Um, maybe another subset is much more driven by um, you know kind of some neurological or um, you know neurological stimulated inflammation or something like that. Um, so it's it's definitely an interesting thing to, to look at, um, especially if you are experiencing, if you have migraines and you are, are experiencing some kind of gut dysfunction, I would encourage you to talk with your um, practitioner um, or find somebody that uh, addresses that and can help you through that um, and see if, you know, if you have uh, tried, you know, working on your gut and um, it has, if it's impacted your migraines whether for better or worse or not at all i'd love to hear that in the comments um but these are some things that you know i'm kind of interested in where is the research going i hope to see more in the future um i hope this kind of starts stimulating your brain on you know what other things or lifestyle factors that you can uh change to impact um impact your your migraines for the better um and things just looking at like you know we know that just aerobic exercise itself is going to help increase the diversity of the uh, of your microbiome. Um, you know, walking through nature and eating out outside and in a relaxed environment is going to help with your with your gut health as well. Um, so these are all things that are going to help you know decrease stress as well as improve um, you know kind of just systemic uh, health as well. So. Yeah, love to hear in the comments if you have any experience with treating your gut to help with your migraines. Um, and I hope this video was helpful for you to kind of think about what other things might be impacting um, what you're experiencing. All right, thanks for watching.